Well, friends, we're delighted that you've tuned in for the broadcast today. We're going to be continuing a message we began a couple of weeks ago about various ways in which we can both receive and minister healing. We kind of went a different way last week. We're going to come back. However, and finish this message out, we believe it's going to be a rich blessing to your life. Before we get into the teaching, though, we want to remind you, as always, to go to our website, randylanebunch.org. And there, of course, we have a number of free resources available to you, our podcast, as well as previous broadcasts of this television show, and other resources as well. Go to our media link at randylanebunch.org, and you'll find that there are many resources free and available to you that we believe will be a great blessing to you. In addition to all the free resources we have, you can also purchase our books from our our website. We have our devotional, Immutable Changes Truth for a Changing World, which we believe will be a blessing to you. But we also have a book that I'm going to actually be reading out of today. We're going to be sharing some testimonies out of this book with you. It's simply called The Gospel Saving Power. You can buy both of these books on Amazon, but if you go to our website, you'll find various links that'll take you uh, to where you can purchase these books, and we believe that they'll be a blessing to your life. As always, we want to hear from you. We want to hear your testimonies. If you've been healed, if you've been saved, if God has touched you through this broadcast in any way, it's a great encouragement to us to hear from you. So please email us at info at connectingpc.org. Well, we want to get right back into the Word of God today, and we're going to be reading from the same story we began with a couple of weeks ago when we started this about ministering uh, various ways of, in which we can receive and minister healing to others. And we're going to be reading this story from Mark chapter 9, where a father brings his son to Jesus. Jesus and is challenged in his faith and Jesus ministers to the boy and there's so much that we can learn from this story beginning in Mark chapter 9 verse 14 we read and when he came to the disciples he saw a great multitude around them and the, and the scribes disputing with them immediately when they saw him all the people were greatly amazed and running to him greeted him and he asked the scribes what are you discussing with them then one of the crowd answered and said teacher I have brought you my son who has a mute spirit and whenever it seizes him, it throws him down, and he foams at the mouth, gnashes his teeth, and becomes rigid. So I spoke to your disciples that they should cast it out, but they could not. He answered and said to him, O faithless generation, how long shall I be with you? How long shall I bear with you? Bring him, bring him to me. Then they brought him to him. And when he saw him, immediately the spirit convulsed him and fell on the ground and wallowed, foaming at the mouth. So he asked his father, How long... Has this been happening to him? And he said, from childhood. And often he has thrown him both into the fire and into the water to destroy him. But if you can do anything, have compassion on us and help us. Jesus said to him, if you can believe, all things are possible to him who believes. Immediately the father of the child cried out and said with tears, Lord, I believe, help my unbelief. When Jesus saw that the people came running together, he rebuked the unclean spirit, saying, Deaf and dumb spirit, I command you, come out of him and enter him no more. Then the spirit cried out, convulsed him greatly, and came out of him. And he became as one dead, so that many said, He is dead. But Jesus took him by the hand and lifted him up, and he arose. What a tremendous story. We talked about this a couple of weeks back, and I mentioned that whenever I use this story, I primarily use it as a teaching tool to show how many people have a misguided approach when coming to the Lord for healing. Now, like we said, we have to command this, commend this man because at least he knew to come to Jesus. And a lot of times people today are trying every method under the sun before they finally come to God and bring their request to him. And so at least this man knew that Jesus could help him. Uh, but when he comes to Jesus, he makes the mistake that many of us make. He throws all the responsibility for his son's healing at Jesus. He basically says to him, you know, this spirit has torn him and thrown him into the fire, into the water many times to destroy him. But if you can do anything, have compassion on us and help us. In other words, if you have the ability and if you care enough, do something and help us. So in this father's mind, if for whatever reason his boy isn't delivered, then either Jesus' ability or his compassion will be called into question. So he's kind of trying to paint Jesus in a corner. And I think a lot of people do that when they wonder, why is there suffering in the world? Why isn't everybody healed? Why is there so much so many bad things that happen to good people, and we just assume that if God is God, he's going to do something about it. And so we kind of try to paint God into a corner similar to what this father did with Jesus. But it's very hard to put Jesus in a corner, and so Jesus puts the shoe of responsibility back on the father's foot and said, if you can believe, all things are possible to him who believes. Some translations render it this way. If you can, 
believe. All things are possible to him who believes. Either way you read it, Jesus is saying, I need some faith out of you. It's not a matter of what I can do. It's not a matter of what I will do. It's a matter of what can you believe. It takes faith to please God, friend. And when we exercise faith, as we've seen again and again and again through our healing school and the various messages we've been teaching on healing, when we exercise faith in the promise of God, it releases God's power to produce healing and blessing and salvation in our lives. We begin to see this in many different instances. We saw, for example, in Romans 1.16, the Bible said the gospel is the power of God unto salvation to them that believe. And we said that salvation doesn't only mean the salvation of our souls or our spirits, but it also means healing as well. We talked, uh, spent quite a bit of time going over those truths. We also saw that the woman who had an issue of blood in Mark chapter 5 came to Jesus, and the Bible said she had heard about his ministry. She had heard about him healing the sick. She came behind him in the press because she kept saying, if I can just touch the hem of his garment, I'll be made whole. And that was her faith in action. When she touched the hem of his garment, the Bible said the power of God that was in, uh, upon Jesus, that a power with, with which he was anointed, flowed out of him and into her and affected a cure and a healing in her body. Jesus turned to her and said, daughter, your faith has made you well. It's a Greek sozo. Your faith has saved you. So again and again, like Jesus said to this father, we need to um, express some faith in the promise of God. We need to express some faith in God to release his power on our behalf. But then the father says something that I think we can all identify with. He said, Lord, I believe. Help my unbelief. There are some people who hear the promise of God and just simply take God at his word and appropriate his promise. But some of us struggle sometimes. We might be looking at the symptoms. We might be hearing the bad reports. Uh, we might be looking at the circumstances which were embroiled at the time. And it just can be very faith defeating. And I think that's what happened with this father. His son's been going through this for a long time since he was a young child. And so I'm sure that that has worn away and undermined this father's faith. And now that he's come to Jesus, he has hope renewed in his heart, and yet he's still wavering somewhat. And I think we can all identify with that. And that's why God can minister healing to us at various levels. So that regardless with where our faith is at, there's some means whereby we can come to God and appropriate his blessing and benefit in our life. Last week, we talked about a number of ways in which God ministers healing to us. And we began talking about the language on of hands. And again and again throughout the scriptures, we see how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power. And wherever Jesus went, he would lay hands upon the sick or the sick, like with the woman of the issue of blood, would touch him and virtue or power would flow out of him and minister healing to the crowds. In one place, the Bible said power flowed out of him and healed them all. And so many times we see this in the life and ministry of Jesus. We see it likewise in the disciples where they would likewise lay hands on the sick. And Jesus told us in Mark 16 that believers would lay hands on the sick and they would recover as well. So again and again, we have this wonderful method of ministering healing to people through the laying on of hands when the tangible anointing of the Spirit of God can be communicated through that touch and the power of God can raise people up. And we shared with you a number of examples and testimonies. Uh, you know, just recently in our church, I had a man come to me, I think it was two weeks ago in our Sunday evening service. And he told me that, uh, you know, he had been on disability, had not been able to go to work. And uh, uh, he had had pain in his back. And he came up a couple of weeks ago in the prayer line or sometime back, I can't remember exactly. And we laid hands on him and the power of God touched him. And he said, from that day to this, I've had no pain. And so God ministered healing to him once again through the laying on of hands. And again and again and again, like we said, we've had so many wonderful testimonies of people who have been healed and ministered to through that means. Secondly, we talked about the fact that if there's any sick in the church, they can call for the elders of the church and they'll anoint them with oil in the name of the Lord and the prayer of faith will save the sick and the Lord will raise him up. This is James chapter 5 verses 14 and 15. I shared with you last week that I had a member of my church call me one time and ask me if I would pray for his wife who is experiencing tremendous back pain. And so being used to just praying for people or laying hands on people in the field ministry, I wasn't really thinking at that moment. My mind was not really engaged about this verse of scripture in James chapter 5 that talks about praying the prayer of faith and anointing the sick with oil. I just wasn't thinking about it. So I told him, brother, we'll pray for her. And when I got off the phone, the Lord arrested me. And I said, Lord, I, I missed it somehow. And he said, your church member called you and asked you to pray for his wife. You should do what I told you to do in my word. If, if there's any sick among you, let him call for the elders of the church. Let them pray over him, anointing him with oil in the name of the Lord. And the prayer of faith will save the sick and the Lord will raise him up. Well, we did exactly what the Lord said. We anointed her with oil. We prayed for her and she was raised up. 
But as I've said, oftentimes people get their eye on the oil and the elders. And as I've said for years and years and years, you can have enough elders to circle the block and enough Crisco to drown in. But if you're not praying the prayer of faith, ain't nobody getting well. So we need to pray the prayer of faith because that's what saves the sick, enabling the Lord to raise them up. Today I want to talk to you about a couple of other ways in which God heals, and one way is through His Word. God heals us through His Word. So I want you to look with me, if you will, at Psalm 107, uh, verse uh, 17. Psalm 107, verse 17. And here we read this. Fools, because of their transgressions and because of their iniquities, were afflicted. Their soul abhorred all manner of food, and they drew near to the gates of death. Then they cried out to the Lord in their trouble, and he saved them out of their distresses. Notice how he did it. He sent his word and healed them and delivered them from their destructions. Notice verse 20 again. He sent his word and healed them and delivered them from their destructions. Now there's a number of ways in which we can look at this verse of scripture. Number one, Jesus is the living word whom God sent to die and pay the penalty for our sins. And as we've said again and again, since sickness and disease came into the earth through, through sin, when Jesus paid the penalty for our sin, he judicially released us from sickness and disease. That's why the Bible said he bore our sicknesses and carried our pains on the cross of Calvary. And thank God that because the living word, Jesus came and died for our sins, then we indeed are healed. He sent his word and healed them. And thank God Jesus came and through him we are healed. There's other ways, however, we can look at this as well. You know, sometimes we might miss the mark. We might not be walking in the light as believers as we should. And if we're not walking in the light of truth, we can get over on the devil's territory and give him a foothold in our lives. And sometimes because of that, he can bring sickness and disease. For example, when Jesus healed the man at the pool of Bethesda in John chapter 5, he told him, go and sin no more lest a worse thing come upon you. Now that doesn't mean that everybody who's sick is sick because they've sinned, but sickness and disease is in the earth because of sin, because of Adam's original sin. But if we as believers walk out of the light and not, not walking according to God's will, plan, and purpose, if we're purposely disobeying him, then sometimes we can open the door to the devil. I remember hearing a, a tremendous story along these lines um, where um, uh, somebody I, I know who ministers healing quite often uh, had a man that was coming to his healing school, to his healing classes, and he was hearing the word of God every day, and faith was coming in, into this man's heart, and he believed that God would heal him. But though they prayed and prayed and prayed, um, it didn't seem like somehow he was making his connection. He was not getting healed. And so finally one day, this minister was preaching on Isaiah 119. If you be willing and obedient, you'll eat the good of the land. And so after the message was over, and basically he made this statement. He said, if you want God's best in your life, you've got to do God's best for your life. In other words, you can't be walking in purposeful disobedience and expect to be a recipient of all the blessings of God. You're opening yourself up to the enemy and he'll come to steal, to kill, and to destroy. And so after the message was over, this man came to this Bible teacher that I know of and he said, I know exactly what the problem is. And he said, what? He said, as a young man, the Lord told me to go on the mission field. He told me to be a missionary. And he said, I was excited about the call of God, but when I went and told my wife, she looked at me and shook her head and said, God hadn't said anything to me about being a missionary. If you want to be a missionary, you'll have to go on your own. And he said, I had to choose between obeying God and, and my wife staying with me. He said, I didn't want to lose her. So I didn't do what the Lord told me to do. I didn't go on the mission field. And so in all these years, he had really been in disobedience to the will, plan, and purpose of God for his life. And he said, brother, we've suffered. I've suffered. Our businesses have suffered. Our children have suffered. My wife and I have suffered. And he was sick in body because, again, he had opened a door to the enemy. So sometimes the Lord will send a word of correction. He sends his word and heals us and delivers us from our destruction. You know, one word of God can save your life. And sometimes you might be even sitting in a sermon, listening to your pastor or somebody else preach the word of God, and suddenly God begins to deal with your heart. The Bible said that God's word is sharper than any two-edged sword and divides asunder soul and spirit, joint and marrow. It can get into those hard-to-reach places of our life. And God may begin to deal with you about certain issues in your life, that you need to make adjustments, where you need to make corrections, where you need to repent. And if God is giving you a word of correction, friend, if you need to make things Things right with God, do so. Shut the door to the devil and appropriate God's best for your life. 
But of course, this word also means that God sends his written word or his preached word into our lives. And of course, as we hear the word of God, faith comes and we can appropriate the promise of God. We shared with you not long ago out of Acts chapter 14, Uh, verses 5 through 10, where Paul was preaching the gospel. And there was a man crippled from his mother's womb who had never walked. As he heard Paul, Paul saw that the man had faith to be healed. And he told the man, rise, stand up on your feet and walk. And the man was gloriously healed because he acted in faith on what he believed because he heard Paul preaching the word. That's what we're doing right now. We're sharing the word of the Lord with you and preaching to you that it's God's will not only to forgive you of your sins, but to heal your body. As David said, he forgives all my iniquities. He heals all my diseases. I remember some years back, I had the opportunity uh, to minister, you know, many of you are watching this from the nation of India, and a number of years ago, our same friends who are giving us this opportunity to minister to you in India today, gave us an opportunity, uh, I think it was back in the mid-2000s, from around 2005 to 2007, something like that. We were on television and ministering the word of the Lord in the nation of India. And during that time, we had so many wonderful testimonies of God reaching out and touching people and ministering healing to them as they heard the word of God, simply acted in faith on what they believed, and some of them were not even Christians. And by the way, as we begin to share these testimonies with you, I want to introduce another way in which God ministers healing to us because it will come into play as we share some of these testimonies with you. And that is oftentimes healing will serve as a sign to confirm the truth of the gospel message. I want you to turn with me if you will to Mark chapter 16 and we're going to read verses 15 through 20. Now this is after Jesus is raised from the dead. He comes and and meets with the disciples. They're hidden behind closed doors. He appears in their midst and he gives them another version if you will of the great commission. And we're going to read that to you right now. Mark chapter 16 starting with verse 15 and it says, and he said to them, go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. He who believes and is baptized will be saved and he who does not believe will be condemned. And these signs will follow those who believe. In my name they will cast out demons, they will speak with new tongues, if they, they will take up serpents, and if they drink anything deadly, it will by no means hurt them. They will lay hands on the sick, and they will recover. So Jesus said there are various signs that will accompany those who preach the word of God. The word signs, by the way, uh, means attesting miracles. They're miracles that accompany the preaching of the gospel to give it divine validation. And Jesus said there's a number of these signs that will follow believers as they preach to show that the word of God is true. You know, Nicodemus came to Jesus by night. He was one of the Pharisees. He didn't want anybody seeing him come to Jesus. And so he came to Jesus by night and he said, Rabbi, we know you're a teacher come from God, for no one could do these miracles that you're doing unless God was with him. That word miracles is actually in the Greek the word signs. Again, it's an attesting miracle that gives divine validation to the truth of the message. And many of the people, I have no doubt, that were hearing us preach in India were receiving healing simply because God was using it as a sign to attest to the validity of the gospel that they were hearing. I want to read you some of those wonderful testimonies that we received from people who were healed through the ministry when we were preaching the word of God way back then uh, in the nation of India. This first testimony was one of my favorite. It came from a fellow by the name of Ponraj. If Ponraj is watching this broadcast, I'd love for you to email me, Ponraj. I'd love to hear from you once again. But this is what he said to me. He said, Dear Sir, I do not know how to address you as I come from a Hindu family. I heard little about Jesus and never believed much of his miracles. I used to make fun of people that they were cured by Jesus Christ. I was sick and in bed, and I was changing my TV channel. There was nothing much interesting on television, and I got annoyed and was changing the channels as a madman. But in a few minutes, it did not work. His remote got stuck on our broadcast. He said, to my surprise, I saw someone, he said, I saw your name and email at the end of the show, was telling about Christ and how he can heal anyone. I was stunned as I was having pain on my knees and could not walk for weeks. But when the prayer was offered to Jesus to heal the sick people, I said, Jesus, heal me. When you finished the offering of prayer to Jesus, I felt a great touch from someone, and I saw a hand took me out of my bed and made me to walk. I thought it was dream, but it is the fourth day, and I am walking without any pain on my knee. I saw your email at the end of the show, and I thought of sending my gratitude gratitude to you. Now what must I do? 
Is there anyone here who can help me to know what I have to do? I offer prayer that Jesus works through you. I am expecting a reply soon. Your friend, Ponraj. Well, I remember when I got this testimony, it was one of the very first ones we got when we began broadcasting, and I was so excited that I emailed Ponraj right back. I prayed with him to accept Christ, and I sent him to my friends who were not very far away from where he was living. They prayed with him also, and God uh, transformed his heart, and Ponraj became a follower of Jesus Christ. It wasn't long after that we had another tremendous uh, report from a woman named Mrs. Ganapathy, and I want to read you her testimony as well. Dear respected sir, Randy Bunch, in God's name I write to you. I am Mrs. Ganapathy, a homemaker. I do not know computer, but my daughter Debbie knows. This is the first letter I ever wrote to anyone. I did not write even to my own family so far because we are raised in a strict Hindu family. You may think why I write this letter to you. I am writing this for one good reason. My mother had eye problems in her left eye and we spent large money for her hospital expenses, but no doctor was able to cure her. She had lost her sight in the left eye. My mother likes to watch television and when she was changing the channel, she tried to change it to another but the remote was not working and you were speaking. My mother called my daughter, her granddaughter, and asked what it was what is the preaching about as she was curious to see a white man saying something which caught her attention. My daughter was translating for her with her little knowledge. But, I, but we got the message. We heard that Jesus can heal the sick. So my mother, my daughter, and myself prayed to Jesus to heal her left eye. It was so marvelous. After you said prayer to Jesus, my mother said she saw Jesus touching her, though she did not have any idea about Jesus. She was healed instantly. Now she has vision in both eyes, and she quit watching other TV programs and likes to watch yours every time. We all thank you, thank Jesus. Do you have any picture of Jesus so that we can keep and worship him? We do not know anything about Jesus and how to offer or say or ask Jesus. So inform us as to what we must do. With folded hands, we give our thanks from our hearts. So once again, a tremendous testimony of healing that came from these humble people who simply believe that Jesus would do exactly what he said he would do in his word. One of my favorite testimonies came right after this uh, from a man whose daughter uh, was in the hospital. And let me read this testimony to you as well. He said, my daughter Jasmine was admitted in the hospital for brain fever. She was suffering with much pain. The doctors gave drips, but it seemed she was in great agony, probably some kind of morphine drip or something like that. So we used to record your healing messages that came on Kingdom TV. So we have decided to play your message in the hospital so she and we all can hear and increase our faith to heal her. We brought the TV VCR and played your message and we all knelt down and prayed when you started praying for the sick. As soon as we finished the prayer, we saw our daughter opened her eyes and was praising. Not only that, two other patients in adjacent room also were healed of their illness. Thanks to you and God. God bless you, Pastor, for your love for the sick people. That's from a brother named James. So we rejoice with all these tremendous healings. How were they healed? Well, I have no doubt that in Pan Raj's case, it might have simply been a sign to attest to him the validity of the gospel that he was hearing so that he could put his faith in Christ and be saved. But here are these Christian people who listened to the broadcast, built up their faith, and simply expressed their faith in the Word of God. And as they did so, their daughter was marvelously healed. One of my favorite testimonies comes from my friend himself, who was giving us the opportunity to minister on the channel, and this is what he wrote me. He said, Dear Pastor Randy, trust that you got my earlier email. The Lord is working and we have people calling and letters keep coming. Just now a lady came and told us that she heard you were preaching about a woman with an issue of blood. The lady had the same problem and was abandoned by the doctors and she became very, very weak and fragile. Almost she hated to live as she thought she was a burden to her family. When she, and he mentioned she's Hindu, heard that the woman had 12 years of an issue of blood problem, she turned the volume high and was listening. After the message, when you prayed, she, she without her knowledge, knelt down and was shouting to Jesus for her healing. She said it was so powerful that she felt a touch and immediately she was cured from the problem. She is Hindu and it is not easy for her to testify like this, but she did. She wanted me to write this to you. Great things are happening. Tell the church that they are reaching the people that they would never be able to reach. We thank you for reaching our country and also thanks to your church and other sponsors. Isn't that wonderful how through the preached word, the power of God can be communicated? And we know that's true because the Bible said the gospel is the power of God 
unto salvation, which includes healing as well as the forgiveness of our sins and the new birth. Friend, if you're sick in body today, we want to pray with you. And if you've never asked Christ to be your Lord and Savior, we're going to pray a simple prayer. And I want you to pray this prayer with me, and then I'm going to pray for those who need healing in their bodies. But if you've never asked Christ to come into your heart, friend, you don't just need healing on the outside. Uh, you need healing on the inside. You need God to change your heart and make you brand new. Just say this with me if you would. Dear Jesus, I believe you died to pay the penalty for my sins. I ask you to come into my heart and I ask you to be my Lord and my Savior. Jesus, I put my faith and my trust in you. Come into my heart. Make me brand new. I surrender my life to you. Now, you may not have prayed that prayer exactly like that, but friend, it's not the exact words that matter. What matters is did you communicate your faith to God and say, Jesus, I believe you died for me. I ask you to come into my heart and make me brand new. If you'll pray that prayer and mean it from your heart, you'll be transformed. You'll be born again. Now, I want to pray for your healing. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray for my friends watching this broadcast right now. Father, regardless of what the physical condition might be, whether it's a, a problem with their blood, a problem with their muscle and tissue, whether it's a problem, Father God, in their bones, or whatever it might be, if it's a chronic condition, if it's a terminal sickness or disease, if it's cancer, Father, I pray right now in the name of Jesus that you would show yourself strong to those watching this broadcast. As they extend their faith, I pray that you administer life and healing to them. In the name of Jesus, we say, be healed. In the name of Jesus, from the crown of your head, to the soles of your feet. Father, we thank you for deliverance from demonic power. We thank you for yokes of bondage being broken off your people right now. Those who don't even know you, we thank you for breaking the yoke of demonic strongholds over their lives that they might be free and call upon the name of Jesus. We thank you for it, Father. In Jesus' name. Friends, contact us. Email us at info at connectingpc.org and go to the website, randylanebunch.org. Many resources there that will continue to build your faith and strengthen you so that you can continue to walk faithfully with God and minister to others what you yourself have received. God bless you. We'll see you next time on Connecting Point. On one particular night, the Spirit of God was moving and God had given me a word of knowledge for somebody with a kidney condition. And for whatever reason, I mean, I look back now and I don't know what made me hesitate, but for whatever reason, I didn't call that out initially. And I thought, I guess maybe in my mind, I'm thinking kidney condition. You know, maybe I hadn't called something out like that. I don't know why I was hesitant, but I didn't. And I kind of just wrote on past that. And then something else came into my heart about somebody with a condition in their heart. So I called that out, a man responded, I prayed for him, and I felt, I've got to obey God. And so I thought, well, we already had one come forward and be ministered to, so if I did miss it, at least we got the one <laughs> ministered to. I don't know what I was thinking. So I called that word out, and the gentleman from the back came forward, very tall, I would say 6'3", six, 6'4", six, at least, maybe more, taller. And uh, he came forward, and very tall, but very thin, very uh, pale, very anemic looking. And um, he said, we prayed for him. And when we prayed for him, I'm telling you, the power of God hit that man. And he fell under the power. And um, he tried getting up a couple of different times. And back down, he'd go. We'd keep praying for him. And he just kept falling under the power of God. And finally, he was just lying there. And everyone else had got up and gone back to their seats. We just missed the service. Everybody else had gone home. And the pastor said, you know, as we're turning out the lights, I'm helping him to his feet and helping he and his wife out to their car. And he said, guys, he said his skin was vibrating underneath my hand as I was carrying him out to his car. Friday night, we had a testimony meeting, and we wanted people who had received a touch, been healed, to come forward. We had a mic up there for them to share. I'm telling you, the moment we opened the mic for testimonies, this guy didn't come walking. He came bounding. A guy, tall guy like that, it looked like a gazelle, bounding down to the front. He grabbed that mic, and he shared the story with us. He said, I was diagnosed with the same kidney condition, deteriorating kidney condition that my mother had died with, and it's always hung over my head like a death sentence. Um, but he had received such a touch from God, nobody had to question whether God had done work in his life. He was still obviously thin, still somewhat uh, pale, because obviously it was going to take a while for him to recover completely from that, but the healing had obviously uh, taken place in his body, and the level of energy and the beaming on his face, the light on his face, uh, told us that God had done a tremendous work. Mm -hmm.